welcome to another exciting episode of Literary Lutheran Reads, A Book of Concord. We are continuing to go through Article 11, God's Eternal Foreknowledge and Election. If we want to think about our eternal election to salvation helpfully, we must in every way hold strongly and firmly to this truth. Just as the preaching of repentance is universal, so also the promise of the gospel is universal, that is, it belongs to all people. For this reason, Christ has given these commands. Repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Luke chapter 24, verse 47. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. John chapter 3, verse 16. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1, verse 29. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John chapter 6, verse 51. The blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. Jesus is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. Romans chapter 11, verse 32. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Romans chapter 10, verse 12. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ is for all who believe. Romans chapter 3, verse 22. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. John chapter 6, verse 40. <clears throat> It is Christ's command that this promise of the gospel also should be offered to everyone in common to whom repentance is preached, Luke chapter 24, verse 47, and Mark chapter 16, verse 15. We should not think of this call of God, which is made through the preaching of the word, as a juggler's act, but we should know that God reveals his will by this call. He will work through the word in the people he calls, so that they may be enlightened, converted, and saved. For the word by which we are called is a ministry of the Spirit which gives the Spirit, or by which the Spirit is given, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. <clears throat> it is God's power unto salvation, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The Holy Spirit wants to be effective through the word and to strengthen and give power and ability. It is God's will that we should receive the word, believe it, and obey it. For this reason the elect are described as follows. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life. John chapter 10, verses 27 and 28. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. They hear the gospel, believe in Christ, pray and give thanks, are sanctified in love, have hope, patience and comfort under the cross. See Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and Romans chapter 8 verse 25. Although all this is very weak in them, they hunger and thirst for righteousness. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Romans chapter 8 verses 16 through 26. Holy Scripture also testifies that God, who has called us, is faithful. So when he has begun the good work in us, he will also preserve it to the end and perfect it, if we ourselves do not turn from him, but firmly hold on to the work begun to the end. He has promised his grace for this very purpose. See 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, and Hebrews chapter 3, verse 2. We should concern ourselves with this revealed will of God. We should follow and diligently think about it. Through the word by which he calls us, the Holy Spirit bestows grace, power, and ability for this purpose. We should not sound the depths of God's hidden predestination, as it is written in Luke chapter 13, 23, verses 23 and 24, where one asks, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And Christ answers, Strive to enter through the narrow door. So Luther says, but you had better follow the order of the Epistle of Romans. Worry first about Christ and the Gospel, that you may recognize your sin and His grace. 
then fight your sin as the first eight chapters here have taught. Then, when you have reached the eighth chapter and are under the cross and suffering, this will teach you correctly of predestination in chapters 9, 10, and 11, and how comforting it is. Preface to the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, 1546. Many are called, but few are chosen, Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. This does not stem from the fact that God's call, which is made through the Word, has the following meaning. It is not as though God said, Outwardly, through the Word, I indeed call all of you to my kingdom, everyone to whom I give my word. However, in my heart I do not mean this for everyone, but only for a few. For it is my will that most of those whom I call through the Word shall not be enlightened or converted. Instead, they shall be and remain damned, even though I explain myself differently to them through the word and the call. For this would be to assign contradictory wills to God. In this way, it would be taught that God, who surely is eternal truth, contradicts himself when in fact God punishes such wickedness in people when a person states one purpose and thinks and means another in the heart. Psalm 5, verse 9, and Psalm 12, verses 2-4. through 4. By this notion, the necessary basis of comfort is made completely uncertain and void. For we are daily reminded and encouraged that we are to learn and conclude what His will toward us is only from God's Word through which He works with us and calls us. We should believe and not doubt what it affirms to us and promises. For this reason, Christ causes a promise of the Gospel not only to be offered in general, but He also seals it through the sacraments. He attaches them like seals of the promise, and by them he confirms the gospel to every believer in particular. This has been the Literary Lutheran Reads of Book of Concord, and I wish you all a blessed day.